This story is called The Caretaker. Zeke Taylor slammed the door to his mom's rusty double wide and ran off into the dusky December evening. Get back here, you little shit, yelled Todd, his mom's boyfriend, as Zeke trucked it down the block. Todd was a mechanic at Barger Auto down on Harrison Drive. He had greasy black hands and had no problem using them to do realignment work on Zeke's face. His mother was always too hopped on Oxy to notice. Zeke ran and ran out of Leicestershire's dinghy south side and into the well-manicured north. Todd would never look for him there. The bastard was too drunk to walk even 50 yards. He turned onto Memorial Drive and stopped in front of Valley View Cemetery. He walked through the front gate and up an eastern path. Gray granite tombstones jutted out of the earth at odd angles in all directions. He passed row after row of graves. A man named Eric Bacon had been buried there in 1896. Some poor sap named Wintermute bit the dust in 1914. Baby Anthony with his weathered lamb monument died in 1934. These were all just names, except for one grave, a relatively new one, located at plot number 47. Her name was Ethel Taylor, but Zeke had always called her Baba. She was the one who watched him when Mom was out with Rick or Steve or Neil, the Walmart cashier who smelled like a walking bottle of Jim Beam. She was the only one there for him at his middle school graduation, or the Pinewood Derby, or the first show of his punk rock band. Drowning Memories When Baba had passed away the previous May, Zeke spent a week in his bedroom. He took a pack of camels out of the back pocket of his jeans, popped out a cigarette, and lit up. The orange glow of the filter looked like a floating flame in the deep dark blue of the evening. He wandered through section 4D and looked at the headstones. Many of them were decorated with freshly cut flowers. The yellows and purples and reds of the bouquets stood out against the oh-so-serious gloomy headstones. These people are worm food and somebody still cares about them, thought C. I'm alive and don't even get a birthday card. He plucked the cigarette from his mouth and rubbed it out on a nearby headstone. Zeke took two steps away from his makeshift ashtray when a voice called out, What the hell do you think you're doing? He felt a moment's panic at being discovered. The muscles from his stomach to his neck tightened. To his right, standing next to a mausoleum like a damn boogeyman, was an elderly man in baggy denim overalls and a long black overcoat. The old coot was short and stout with a mouthful of ugly teeth and a head full of matted white hair. He was covered head to toe in dirt. Nothing, said Zeke sheepishly. He glanced over at the pack of cigarettes, which he had forgotten on top of the headstone. The man drew closer. He held a lantern up to his head, the glow of which cast nasty shadows across his cracked and wrinkled face. He smelled like he regularly bathed in unleaded gasoline. Don't lie to me, said the man. He nodded his head toward the cigarette butt lying in front of the headstone. I'm the caretaker for this here cemetery, and nothing gets past me. Zeke turned to walk away, but the man grabbed him by the arm. His grip was shockingly strong for a guy Zeke figured was closer to 70. Where do you think you're going? His rum-soaked breath warm on Zeke's face. Zeke panicked and yanked his arm out of the old man's grasp, then sprinted toward the front gate. After running 50 or so yards, he looked over his shoulder. He couldn't see the man anymore, but could make out the lantern glow, and it was definitely moving in his direction. He bolted out of the cemetery and headed for home, the thought of Todd's XL belt from earlier that evening still fresh on his mind. Zeke got out of school the next day, and rather than head for Skullville Trailer Village, walked across town back to Valley View. His ass was still sore from Todd's belt, and he wasn't up for any more penance. 
Some folks might say that hanging out in a cemetery was creepy or weird, but for Zeke, it meant peace and quiet. He just had to make sure he didn't run into that cantankerous caretaker. He had swiped his mom's flask and made short shrift of the remaining Captain Morgan's. After downing half the flask, he chucked it at a hanging basket of flowers and moved onward. There was no sign of the caretaker, so he walked to his grandmother's grave. Zeke stood in front of her tombstone and smiled. Baba had always been a giving woman. She never failed to bring him a present when she stopped by despite her meager retirement from Leicestershire General. He thought about the time she came over with a big box of his favorite snack, peanut brittle. He had opened it with glee and gave her a big hug and thanks. Later that night, he found out Todd had eaten it all. When he complained, Todd simply backhanded him. The memory sent Zeke into a rage, and he tore through the cemetery, kicking over freshly placed flowers, teddy bears, and other knickknacks left behind on loved ones' graves. He was about to punt a bouquet of flowers clear across Section 4D when he heard a strange whistling then spotted the caretaker heading in his direction. Zeke quickly ducked behind a nearby grave. He didn't believe in ghosts or ghouls or any horseshit like that, but he was certainly scared of pissed off drunks. The ground in front of the tombstone was cool and hard against his hands. The earth smelled like a mix of mold and formaldehyde. The smooth marble of Mr. Edward Burberry's headstone felt cold against his face. He heard the caretaker's heavy footsteps on the hard, dead grass just yards away, punctuated by an out-of-place whistling. The caretaker's tune reminded him of carousel music. As the sound drew closer, Zeke's heart raced in anticipation of a beating if discovered. Zeke got on all fours and crawled toward a nearby grave. He made it five feet or so when he felt the force of a heavy work boot on his back and heard the caretaker's gravely voice made hoarse by decades of inhaling dirt. What did I tell you about messing around in my cemetery? He lifted his boot up, and Zeke rolled onto his back, a sharp rock digging into his spine. He thought about the corpses rotting away just feet below and how close he was to joining their ranks. I see you've been busy, said the caretaker. The man reached toward an out trembling Zeke. Before he could grab hold of him, Zeke rolled onto his stomach, pushed himself back to his feet, and shot off toward the cemetery's front gate. This time, he didn't bother looking back. Zeke wasn't a bad kid at heart, but he had a knack for getting into trouble, like a dog has for chasing cars. The same pig-headedness that earned him three straight weeks in detention at Leicestershire High led him back to Valley View, a week later for another night of alcohol-fueled revelry. He climbed on top of altar tombs and pissed off the side drunk out of his gourd. He smoked a whole pack of camels and blessed each headstone in row 120 with a ceremonial cigarette butt. He made Valley View his own little playground, and he was too hammered to care about any damn caretaker. He waited for the old man to come out and scold him, to grab him and shake him like the little shit for brains he was. But there was no sign of him. The sun dipped below the horizon and the moon took its place, shining down on the headstones and casting rectangles, squares, and cross-shaped shadows on the ground. The trees, black and gnarled, creaked in the breeze. Squirrels scurried to their homes. The moldy sting of the grass and sod was never more pungent. The whiskey that Zeke had swiped from Todd's pickup was doing its job. Zeke stumbled around the cemetery grounds like a one-legged zombie, falling over stones and walking headfirst into low-hanging branches. The liquor was so potent, in fact, he didn't even see the open grave ten feet in front of him. He just kept moving forward, five feet sluggish and dry mouth. Two. One. Too late. He yelled as he half fell into the hole. His fingers dug into the coarse cold dirt. He scrambled for something solid to grab hold of as he slipped in. A rock, a tree root, anything. But the dirt crumbled through his shaking white knuckles like sand. 
he lost his grip completely and fell to the bottom of the hole, landing on the cold, rocky surface below. He hit the ground awkwardly, his ankle twisting beneath him at an unnatural angle. He screamed as he held his now useless appendage. Zeke cried out for help, yelling at the top of his lungs for what seemed like hours. No one came. He was seven to eight feet below the ground in the middle of an empty cemetery on a cold late autumn night. Who the hell would come other than death himself, he thought. He attempted to stand up, holding on to the freshly dug earthen wall for leverage, but his leg was too mangled to hold any of his weight. The temperature already a frigid 20 degrees was falling rapidly. He tucked his arms inside of his flannel shirt and curled up into a ball as flakes of snow began to fall into the dark pit. His teeth shattered like an automatic weapon. Meanwhile, his body began gently shaking. He gradually stopped fighting the cold and drifted into a dreamlike state. He remembered how Baba would hold him and tell him everything would be okay. Even if it wasn't going to be okay, he still felt better. But she couldn't help him now. She was well below the surface herself, boxed up and rotting away. No one was coming. He doubted his mom would even notice that he wasn't in his bed in the morning. Another hour passed. His trembling body, which up to that point felt numb and cold, seemed to warm as he drifted. The snow began to fall harder, and a small mound gathered up over his useless leg. I'm going to die here, thought Zeke. That old crotchety caretaker is going to find my body in the morning, and they'll bury me three days from now. Hell, they might as well just throw the dirt back in this hole and call it a day. He was about to close his eyes and accept his fate when he heard a faint whistling. It was the caretaker. Zeke was in such bad shape that he contemplated yelling to him for help. But then he recalled their last meeting. He figured he had angered the old man enough that he would either laugh at him and let him learn his lesson the hard way, or worse, he might start shoveling the dirt back into the hole. Crunching heavy footsteps approached the grave. Zeke closed his eyes and held his breath as he shook violently in the frostbitten cold. When the crunching stopped, he opened one eye and slowly looked up. His heart jumped and he nearly fainted when he saw the overwhelming figure of the caretaker in silhouette, leaning over the hole, shovel in hand. He buried his head in his arm to hold back tears, resigned to whatever fate the caretaker deemed suitable. Grab my hand, kid. He looked over to see the caretaker kneeling at the edge of the grave, holding out his hand. Zeke hesitated, unsure if it was a trick, although ultimately he knew he had no choice as he could no longer feel his fingertips or the foot attached to his swollen ankle. Not to mention he still had a strong desire to not die in that hole. Zeke slowly got up, supporting himself on his good leg. He held his hand out to the man in silhouette. With the strength that could only come from decades of hard labor, the caretaker pulled Zeke out of the hole and onto safe ground. Zeke lay on the snowy grass, panting as the caretaker loomed over him. You could have gotten yourself killed, said the caretaker, who sounded more like a concerned parent than the deranged old man Zeke had thought him to be. Thank you, sir, said Zeke, trying to speak between the shivers. The caretaker shook his head. See what kind of shit you can get into, fooling around in here at night? I don't want to see any more shenanigans from you, you hear? Zeke nodded. He was too shaken up to say anything intelligible. The caretaker nodded back and scratched his big belly. Now let's get you out of here before you freeze to death. He lifted Zeke up over his back and carried him to the front gate. A car approached, and the old man set Zeke down on the sidewalk beneath the iron arc. Zeke hobbled toward the street and waved both arms at the already slowing vehicle. The driver stopped and got out to help the teen as it was obvious how bad a shape he was in. As the car drove away from the cemetery, Zeke looked out the passenger window, intending to wave goodbye to the caretaker. But the man was nowhere to be seen.
months passed and the perpetual snow melted in Leicestershire. Folks traded their blow-up, light-up, officially licensed Christmas decorations for bunnies, chicks, and Easter eggs. Zeke walked back into Valley View Cemetery for the first time in months, sober and collected for a change. The sun shied down on the rich green grass. Blue skies and puffy white clouds were reflected in the shiny marble tombstones of sections A through G. Zeke saw an old man mowing the grass and walked toward him, thinking it was the caretaker. He wanted to thank him for saving his life. But when he drew closer, he saw that it wasn't the same man. This fellow was taller, more spelt, and he was wearing khakis. Compared to the other caretaker, this guy looked like a damn gap model. Seeing Zeke approach, the man let go of the handle on the mower. The engine powered down and the cemetery was suddenly appropriately serene. Can I help you, young man, said the stranger. Hi, I'm looking for the caretaker, said Zeke. Have you seen him around? I owe him big time. He kind of saved my life a few months back. The man gave Zeke a quizzical look. Are you sure you're not thinking of someone else? I've been the caretaker here for roughly 20 years. Did I dream all that up? thought Zeke. Oh, I'm sorry, he said. I just figured he was the caretaker. You know, the old guy with the white hair, wears overalls and whistles old tunes. The middle-aged caretaker looked at Zeke like he had just told him he shaved cats for a living. That sounds a hell of a lot like Charlie Mathers, but he's been dead for a couple decades now. Gruff guy, but he was good at heart. Funny, that's just what killed him. Died of a heart attack in 79. I took over right after. Zeke felt like his stomach had just floated up and lodged into his throat. You must be mistaken, said the man. I'm the only guy here. I had one fellow mowing the lawns, but I caught him sleeping on the job a few weeks ago. He had to fire him. He rolled his eyes. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else, said Zeke, realizing the strange and mysterious truth of the matter. He started to walk away when the caretaker called out to him. Hey, you seem like a decent kid. You looking for a job? The grass is starting to get pretty high here, and I can't keep up with all of it by myself. What do you say? Blades of grass shot from the ground as Zeke made his way through Section 4D of Valley View Cemetery with a Husqvarna weed whacker. He released his finger from the trigger and the machine shut down the spinning line thwacking against the ground. Bob's grave had never looked so nice. She would be proud of him as she always had been. He turned and waved to Charlie, who was busy trimming the hedges in section A5. Charlie waved back and scratched his gut. Zeke looked around the cemetery. It was a peaceful place. Even the moldy grass was starting to smell sweetly familiar. <laughs>